Hey guys, how is it going? My name is Liz and today I want to show you my completely impossible September TBR. So I have a lot of books um, that I've borrowed from the library and most of them are running out very, very soon. So I have a stack here of 11 books. Nine of them are from the library and nine of them have to be finished by the 16th of September. I don't know if I'm actually gonna manage to do that, but I'm gonna try because these books just sound so interesting. I just haven't gotten around to reading them because I try to shop my own bookshelves uh, more this year. But yeah, I mean, you're a book, book addict if you're watching this channel, so you get the problem. <laughs> one of the books I wanna show you is one of them by Musa Okwanga. So he studied at Eton College and a school reunion is coming up and he's really unwilling to go because he feels like he hasn't accomplished as much as his schoolmates. And um, he's also reflecting in this book about um, what Eton College meant to him, what it was like for him as a person of color to go to such a place and um, what reputation Eton College has. And I think this is going to be a really interesting perspective on such an elite college because it's by a person of color. And um, it's also going to be a really short read, which is a good thing um, this month. Um, another read that's another short read thank God, like for real, um, is White Rage, uh, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson. So in this book, um, Carol is, Carol Anderson is um, describing how white rage has had such a huge impact on our history, uh, especially the American history. Like when it came to, um, like when it comes to post-Civil War black codes, Jim Crow, um, the white rage after the election of the first black president and how that backlash to the empowerment of other people who are not white, um, if that's even a thing, um, <laughs> is, has always had a, quite a traumatic impact on history. So I think this is a really important read. I've heard so many good things about it and yeah, can't wait to dive into this one. The next book I want to show you is one that's actually one of my books, um, so it doesn't have that much priority, though after the 16th I can read whatever I want, right? Um, but yeah, this is a, a book that immediately caught my attention because I love the cover. And this is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, and this takes place in the, in the, 16, the early 1960s. Um, when um, Elizabeth uh, Sott is um, working at Hastings Research Institute in her all-male team and um, all of the guys treat her really horribly except for one guy that she falls in love with. Um, I think they have a child together, I'm not sure. Um, anyways, they find um, uh, that they are not a good fit eventually and she gets divorced. And after she gets divorced, she starts this cooking show called Supper at Six and she has like the, her own spin on it because she brings her chemistry degree into cooking. But by doing that, she brings up quite a subversive element to it and um, women love her show, um, especially because of the subversive nature of, of her show and uh, that's when she sort of gets in trouble, I think. I've heard good things about this and I just love um, the plot description so I'm excited to read this one. The next one is again from the library which is why the cover is on the inside. And this is Men Who Hate Women by Laura Bates. So I also read Misogynation by Laura Bates which was an essay collection and this one is like a, um, a non-fiction book that's not made up of essays. And in this book, she describes pe like men who really hate women, who whose misogyny has taken on like a really dangerous edge, like incels and pickup artists, like people who actually actively want to harm women. And she really looks at uh, that world and um, why that is, how it happened, came to be, that sort of thing. Can't wait to dive into this one, even though it's probably gonna make me angry. <laughs> Um, the next one is another book about um, 
women's issues. I mean, I personally see them as human rights issues, but yeah. Um, and that's Unwell Women by Eleanor um, Cleghorn. And this is um, a book about medicine and um, women. Um, it's called A Journey Through Medicine and M Myth in a Man-Made World. And it's about how often medicine has been wrong about women and um, uh, how women have suffered as a consequence of that. I love the cover, um, but this is going to be my thickest read uh, of this month. Um, so I think... I'm gonna read like half of it, and if I'm gonna if I like it, I'm just gonna buy it, <laughs> and um, that way I can actually get through my TBR um, without losing anything. Um, but yeah, it sounds really amazing. I think a lot of things that are happening in medicine, especially when it comes to women, is so wrong, especially when it comes to women of color, and so I think this is gonna be a really enlightening read. The next book is a fiction book, um, very few fiction books this month. And um, this one, I am i don't know what to think about this one, but i um, still excited to read it. And that's Nick by uh, Michael Ferris uh, Smith. Yes, yeah, Smith. And uh, another library copy, as you can see. And this is uh, The Great Gatsby from Nick's POV. So, um, Michael Ferris Smith um, really explores the homosexuality of Nick in this book a lot further. And um, I personally really loved The Great Gatsby when I first read it in 2010, I think. Um, I was studying abroad in the United States and my English professor gave um, that book to me, which I had never heard about. And I just loved the sentences, I just loved the language. And um, so this is going to be um, pretty cool to dive into, back into the Great Gatsby world. The next book is another non-fiction book and that's Hiding in Plain Sight. Let me just show you the cover. Um, the Invention of Donald Trump and the Erosion of America by Sarah Can Cancillo. And Sarah Cancillo in this book is looking at uh, the rise of Donald J. Trump and how um, the erosion of democracy started to happen and why he even could be successful even though he was, I mean, underqualified, like that doesn't even like begin to describe what he was for the job. And um, yeah, this is going to be a really interesting read. This was written in 2019. Um, so yeah, it's going to be an interesting look back. Um, to that time that we still haven't left behind. Um, the next book is another fiction book and this one is has the best cover. I don't know if I can actually show you the real... Yes, I can. So the cover has an orange cat on it and it's called A Room Called Earth. Um, it's by Madeline Ryan. I mean amazing cover. I also love the book, like, book itself um, underneath the cover and this is um, from the point of view of a woman on the autism spectrum and she's going to a party and that's it like she describes what being at a party is like for her um, so I think this is going to be a really interesting dive into the psyche of somebody on the spectrum um, what's real social situations like that that are quite intense um, are like for her and uh, this was recommended by Mercedes by, of Mercy's Bookish Musings if you want to check out her channel and um, yeah I trust her judgment on most uh, things and yeah looking forward to this one. Next one is also um, uh, a fiction book and it has <laughs> I mean, the cover is beautiful, but what's hidden underneath the cover is, is just a mindfuck, I'm not gonna lie. So the cover is gorgeous, right? It's Halsey Street by um, Naima um, Coster. And be warned, you're gonna see Voldemort with a saxophone. I mean, this does look like Voldemort, right? I mean, it's so creepy. On the back, there's a gin bottle which with the green of Slytherin, I don't know, it's giving me major Harry Potter vibes. But the plot sounds pretty amazing. Um, I ordered this at the library after I had read um, 
When No One Is Watching, which is an amazing book, book you, you should definitely pick up if you haven't read, read it yet. Um, but this is about Penelope Grant, who is an artist living in Pittsburgh, and it's basically about gentrification. It's about the gentrification of a neighborhood, what it means for people of color, and uh, especially as a woman of color, what it means to her. And um, yeah, I think... That's pretty much it. Um, don't know much more about this than that. And it's a super creepy cover. I don't think I can actually read this at night. Like, no. <laughs> and um, second to last, but last non-fiction book, is uh, Digitize and pa Punish by... This actually doesn't have a cover. It's just a very boring book. Um, by Brian Jefferson. Um, racial criminalization in a digital age, and this is the most boring book I've ever seen. Actually, it doesn't have a cover, or at least not in this library copy. And um, <clears throat> in this book, uh, the author describes uh, how um, the digitalization of the criminal system, the criminal justice system, um, is really racist, and how. Um, especially uh, black men, are really uh, persecuted in a way that's like really unproportionate to the crime rate and um, how a lot of black men are on surveillance simply because they are black. And I know very little about the digital aspect in uh, the criminal justice system and um, in general, and especially not about the racial aspect of it, so I think this is going to be a really interesting read, and it's also pretty short. <laughs> and last but not least, a book I don't have yet, but I'm so looking forward to, that's Love and the Brain by Ellie Hazelwood. So after all of the very serious non-fiction I have on my stack, I can't wait to dive into another Ailey Hazelwood um, romance. So this is about B. She's a NASA... She works at NASA. I forgot as what, but she's a scientist. And she works with her absolute nemesis called Levi. And he ends up being her ally um, without her really realizing it. And that's all I know about it. I love Ailey Hazelwood's writing. I I just really enjoy her books and um, that's gonna be like my, I don't know, my book in shining armor, if you want to call it that. <laughs> so yeah, that's my pretty much impossible TBR for September. Let me know if you've read any of these books um, that's on my TBR, though it's a pretty weird selection, not gonna lie. And let me know what you are planning on reading in September. I will see you soon. Bye!